Hello YouTubers, welcome back to Vintage Tech Doctor. So I'm filming this on my phone today, so apologies for the quality. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the CRT televisions I've got in my collection. Um, there's, you know, I've got plenty of time on my hands at the moment. It's, uh, this is filmed during the, uh, the big lockdown of 2020, so um, yeah, lots of time on my hands. So I thought I'd uh, show you some old vintage CRTs and uh, how I've actually got them connected up. So we'll start with this one. This is a, a national television, which is made by, uh, which is the Panasonic. Um, it's a Panasonic brand, basically. It's uh, Matsushita. Uh, Japanese so national was one of the one of the brands that Matsushita used um, they also use Panasonic and Technics so this is the uh, the national version so we'll uh, we'll switch him on this is a all transistorized set takes a long time to come on as you can see this thing is from 1976 we should get a picture at some point. There we go. Okay, let's turn the volume down a little bit. So. Obviously, as you know, you can't just plug an aerial into these things and have them work. You have to connect the Freeview box. Like I've got here, this is a nice crypt Freeview box. I'm not sure of the model number. It's uh, not printed on the front anywhere that I can see. Um, now this. Freeview box as well has got a built-in RF modulator, which is essential, which means you connect your Freeview box directly into the aerial socket, like so. And you don't need any other converters. Handy thing with this particular Freeview box, not only has it got a built-in modulator, but it's also got the ability to modulate other sources as well. So I've got my DVD recorder here, which I'm, as you can see, I'm using to uh, currently to archive some old video tapes onto DVD. So I, I don't play them in the built-in Toshiba thing; it's just horrible. Built, I play them on my uh, Ferguson Video Star, which goes into the DVD recorder, and the DVD recorder is plugged via SCART into the modulator. Just to show you how that works. I turn on the DVD recorder and the Freeview box becomes the RF modulator for the DVD recorder. Absolutely brilliant. Who knew that you could do something like that with a Freeview box? Um, I don't think you can with a lot of others. This just happens to be this particular model. Um, so if you do want to get one of these things, it's a nice crypt. Um, but I don't know the model number. I can't. It's not written on it anywhere. But that's what it looks like. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I've got the um, DVD currently now hooked up through the TV. So anyway, this TV got some really cool features. It's a Delta Gun tube. Now, I don't think this will show up on screen. Yes, it will. The picture is made up of red, green and blue dots arranged in a triangular shape. Uh, this is not like the newer CRTs, which are basically vertical lines of red, green and blue. These are little tiny dots, much more like a computer screen. Um, and the resolution, actually, on this TV is really, really good. I mean, this is 1976 we're talking about. Um, so, yeah, pictures. It's got a really smooth picture. It's also got a really cool tuning feature. You push this button, it's called Green Line. And uh, well, yeah, when you want to tune in your channel, let's say that one here, turn that control, and you watch the green line. And when it gets at its thinnest, like that, you are tuned in correctly. How cool is that? Lovely TV. Let's turn that back off so we can get an idea of the actual TV picture. There seems to be a lot of light shining on the screen at the moment. Um, yeah, you get the idea. If I go up close, you can hopefully see the red, green and blue dots that make up the picture. But it does give you a really nice sort of smooth picture. It's got a few little glitches. Every now and again, the picture will sort of jump slightly. Um, but, you know, this thing's like 44 years old, you know, it's older than me. You know, and I'm not in perfect condition, so <laughs> neither is this. 
Um, but so far, it's not needed any major repairs, other than just having the convergence readjusted. The convergence was way off when I got it. I only paid 15 quid for it. Um, so yeah, that's the National 1976 model. Moving on, I've got a broadcast monitor here. Um, this is a JVC high resolution broadcast video monitor. Now this is this is uh, my sort of home studio where I do a lot of audio and video work. Um, so this thing is actually used in a professional uh, situation along with professional video kit for um, high quality analog to digital transfers. We've got you know pro proper PPMs here. The Nivea cheap meters, proper PPMs, BBC style. Um, so yeah, this is this is again a really good monitor. It's high resolution. It uses the um, Delta gun tube as well. If I can get around the back, you can see all the BNC connectors, Nest video connectors. Um, obviously, no need for RF on this, but it does have um, S video, which gives stunning results from the uh, the video equipment down there. Uh, the picture is so crisp and clean on this thing. It's just, it's super, super good quality. Um, and it's got lots of interesting features. Obviously, you've got your brightness, contrast, things like that. You've got a very in-depth menu system, which uh, gives you <laughs> lots of layers of menus when you press different combinations of these buttons as well. Um, professional features here, we know, talking stuff that you'd use in a television studio. Um, yeah, so again, really good high resolution monitor. Um, honestly, it beats any LCD TV picture. Yeah, okay, it's not high definition, but for standard definition, I don't think you can get better than something like this. Bedroom TV time now. No, I bet there's not many people with one of these in their bedroom. I'm going to switch this on from the switch behind me. This is a Barco CVM. 3051. Now this is the sort of from the top end of broadcast monitors. Um, this thing is probably one of the best broadcast monitors I've ever seen in my life. Now um, it has on the back, let's have a look, we've got everything. RGB, S-video, composite video, you name it, it's got it. And it's, you know, it's PAL, it's NTSC, it's CCAM, it's whatever you want to chuck at it, basically. So I'm going to switch my Freeview box on, which is hooked up via S-Video. And I'm sure I'll get a copyright strike for showing that, so I'll just scan around different channels. Now, the flickering you see is not actually there. It's just the way that my camera in my phone um, reacts to pointing it at a television screen because it runs at a different frame rate. So TV is uh, 25 frames per second and the phone is at 60, so or 30 rather. Um, 60 hertz that is. So that's why there's a flicker. But again, this is a Delta Gun tube. All the best CRTs are Delta Gun tubes and I don't think it's going to show up on this because the resolution is so fine you can't even see the dots. You need a magnifying glass to see the dots that make up this picture. And again, I gotta stress, these are phosphors, these are not pixels. Right, um, yeah, I mean the picture on this thing is as good as it'll ever get on a CRT, it really is. Uh, and you've got um, various modes. I mean, I've, I'm, I got it in uh, 16 by 9, obviously, because television today is 16 by 9, but you've, you've got under scan, you've got over scan, you've got modes where you can turn off different colours um, on the picture, you've got all different sort of test modes, you've got a really comprehensive uh, menu system on this thing, it's fantastic. Look at that picture. It is stunning. Now there's no sound on a monitor like this, uh, it's just a video monitor. So, this is where this tiny little realistic amplifier comes in and then the speaker there to to give us some sound so there's also a dvd player above to hook up if i wanted to although i never do i never 
really watch DVDs in my bedroom. I don't bedrooms for sleeping really so this thing gets about an hour of use a day tops you know but it is an amazing monitor and I was so lucky to pick it up switch it off um, for I think it was about £9.99 something like that it was just being checked out from sort of some sort of salvage thing uh, it cost more to ship it to me than it did to actually pay for the item big mistake on the seller's part because he tried to cancel uh, the eBay auction after I bought it saying oh you don't want this it's got screen burn it's got issues it's got this that and the other um, it's gonna cost too too much to send it uh, like, well you know you shouldn't have listed it then so um, oh hello my faithful assistant there um, so yeah I went ahead with the purchase they were happy to do it they just tried to put me off a bit but um, yeah it turned up um, thankfully in one piece because sometimes these things don't and they get sent with couriers but yeah the quality absolutely second to none um, really good lucky purchase it was before the big um, retro gaming uh, resurgence now something like this now would probably go for several hundred um, because retro gaming you just put retro gaming in the title and all of a sudden for some reason it gives you the uh, the ability to charge 50 times what it's actually worth but um yeah got it for a tenner off ebay uh, you, d you don't come across those deals anymore all right next up the kitchen table telly so let's switch this on i've seen this before in one of my other videos where i unboxed it and uh yeah. here it is in in, in action, uh, this thing is, um, this is a Trinitron tube, vertical stripes of red, green and blue, and the Trinitron tube is actually quite a, it's quite a nice looking tube really, um, and especially since this is from around 1970, it's a good set for the time, it was very ahead of its time in the type of tube it was using. Um, it does require the hue adjustment. Look at the colour of the faces. So every time you turn it on, <laughs> you've got to adjust the hue to get the best tint on the, on the flesh tones. You know. um, again, I got another of these Ice Crypt preview boxes hooked up to that via RF. Again, it does require an RF modulator to operate. You can't use any old Freeview box. You either have to have a Freeview box with a built-in RF modulator, or you buy a separate RF modulator and connect your Freeview free, yeah? <laughs> connect your Freeview box to it. Um, I do like this set. It's stylish. This is a really stylish set. Um, again, the flicker you see on the picture is not really there, it's just the camera reacting to a 25 frame per second picture when it doesn't run at 25, uh, 25 frames per second itself. So, yeah, this is how it's hooked up. Aerial in, RF modulated out. No scarves, because these tellies don't have scarves, they're way before scarves. Uh, this thing took a lot of uh, a lot of fixing actually let's turn him off it's it it's um after i unboxed it and made that video there was uh, numerous issues unfortunately um the color uh, delay line unit which is a big sort of rectangular module on the board um which actually decodes the color in a non-standard way well done sony um yeah it, it packed up um and i i didn't know what where the fault lay but all the colours went really screwy and um, ended up with uh, lots of flashing colours. Some colours would flash, some colours were missing altogether. So um, you had reds, greens and blues, which is the three primary colours. So it meant all the guns were working on the CRT, but the demodulation was so messed up that uh, there was no yellow in the picture. Um, and greens looked incredibly weird. So um, after changing a whole bunch of capacitors, transistors... Uh, from a donor set, which um, well, is basically the same as this one, only completely dead. Um, I eventually thought, well, there's only one thing left that I haven't tried, and that's the actual uh, delay line module. And I swapped it out. Bingo. All the colours were back 
So yeah, it was the delay line module all the time and then uh, followed the uh, service manual as closely as I could to just readjust um, all of the uh, all sort of the, the, the tuning coils and so on to get the right sort of uh, colours and stuff and get the, the tint range back to where it was meant to be. So yeah, we now got a decent looking um, TV. Although I do fear that the CRT is starting to get soft. And um, yeah, the focus isn't 100% and because there's no focus control on this set, um, I'm kind of stuck with it. Next up, it's the living room TV. So yes, I know I've got two. I've got this one at the top for watching things like YouTube and various things off my Roku streaming stick. And down here, we got the nice good old fashioned 1978 um, Granada Colour television. It's not made by Granada Colour, they were only a, a reseller and a renter of TVs. Um, it was made by GEC. Got an incredibly annoying on and off switch which will not latch as it takes a few goes. But uh, yeah, so how have I got this hooked up? Again, RF, the old aerial cable. So what we got is a lovely Sony Freebie box which is hooked up through my Panasonic video recorder. The video recorder acts as the RF modulator because the Sony Freebie box does not have an RF modulator. So there's a SCART coming out of this, into this, and it gives you this. Again, there's a lot of sun coming in my window this morning. It's a nice sunny day. Um, so it's rather hard to see the picture, but it is a wonderful TV picture. It is so clear, it's crisp. It's not a Delta gun, it's a shadow mask, slot mask tube, which is red, green and blue vertical um, squares, well not squares, rectangles. Yeah, it's got, you know, what has it got? You've got one, two, three, and then you've got another one, two, three, four. IBA, the Independent Broadcasting Authority. And you've got the BBC, one, two, and three at the top. Um, you know, volume, contrast, brightness, colour, all what you expect. But the picture on this thing is amazing. It's had a, numerous repairs over the years. Um, it's had a lot of resistors burn out. It's had... Um, couple of the colour drive transistors replaced, uh, full IF alignment, um, a badgectomy, they didn't have the badges when I got it, um, but I had a, again I had a donor set, I was lucky to find a second one of these, um, which actually worked when I got it, but um, before long I was swapping bits out to keep one of the sets working and this is the one that I kept working. The tube went in the other one. Um, and once the tube is gone there's no point you carrying on. Uh, so yeah, this has had a lot of donor parts put into it over the years. But um, considering this is one year younger than me, um, I think it's looking rather good. It, it's, a, it's an absolute joy to watch, to be honest. It, the picture quality is stunning. And the camera does, does not show it up. It doesn't show how good it is. Um, but the colour accuracy on this thing is amazing. You know, skin tones, flesh tones, whatever, are so much better than the TV at the top there. Because, you know, LCD TVs, yeah, they're great. They're high resolution and this, that and the other. But I don't know, the colour rendering just doesn't have that certain look about it that a, a CRT does. Something special about the uh, way a CRT looks. And finally, this is where a hobby turns into obsession. Welcome to the man cave. This is what used to be a garage. <laughs> then it was a workshop. Now it's a workshop slash arcade. Um, so I've got <laughs> CRTs everywhere here. This is just a little <clears throat> novelty um, thing that I knocked up out of a broken Atari. The Atari was not repairable. If it was, I would have repaired it. So it's just the case of an Atari with some buttons and a Raspberry Pi inside and it plays um, track and field and hypersports on this lovely little JVC 
um, video monitor slash television from the 90s, um, which is not bad, it's got quite a good picture on it. Picked up at a flea market for a, I don't know, five quid or something I think it was. Then there's the homemade, ah, get myself out of the picture, homemade arcade machine, which uh, has a 16-1 board in it and a Philips uh, CRT television set for the monitor. It's really good quality. Uh, we got the BBC Model B hooked up to its original Cub um, TTL monitor, so which is TTL is like a digital RGB. Um, again, stunning quality of this thing. Um, this tube is just fantastic. It is a replacement tube, I had to change that. Uh, the original one was really, really soft. So found another Cub monitor that was um, rather battered shape, but had a good tube, so swapped it over. And there's the old Tandberg tape deck for loading in the games and programs. Then we have Philips TX, black and white, hooked up to one of those 80s tennis games. Then another Philips, this is a 16 inch, unusual size, colour TV from the uh, early 80s. This was my grandpa's TV and they gave this to me when I was a kid. Um, very nostalgic and you know, sentimental value to this TV. Um, it's not the best TV in the world, but it's got a very watchable picture. Um, obviously built to last. I mean, this thing is coming up to 40 years old. It's, it still looks like it came out of the factory yesterday, you know. Fantastic. Then another, this is a Sonatel black and white TV. Not exactly sure who Sonatel are. Um, it's probably one of those rebadged Samsungs or something. But on top of that is a Lab Gear RF modulator. Now this is another option for you. If, like me here, your Freeview box, which is another Sony, does not have an RF modulator, you hook it up, take the back connections, the, uh, the yellow is the video, and then you get your red and white audio, and you hook them up to the RF modulator. The RF modulator then converts the signal into RF, which goes in through... Eh, it's not plugged in at the moment, but it goes in through the aerial socket. At the moment this is running the Philips TV, but uh, you yeah, swap a leader on the back and it runs the black and white TV, and then you just tune it in. <laughs> on the old dial there, and uh, this TV is amazing. Uh, best black and white TV picture I've seen probably my whole life. It's really sharp, It's but the, the, uh, the detail is fantastic. So yeah, this is, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of other old CRTs knocking around in various places. A, I think that's a Samsung, actually. And then there's a Ferguson from 1986 uh, down there. Very soft tube on that one, unfortunately. Um, not a great deal I can do with that. It does work, just um, hasn't got the best picture in the world. So yeah, this is uh, my little arcade collection. All CRTs. And uh, yep, I am more than aware that my hobby has turned to obsession. And uh, treatment may be necessary.